In today's video I'm going to be creating this diamond patterned quilted insulation curtain that will keep the temperature in the upstairs roof bed more stable and help it stay a lot darker up there as although it's a lovely thick canvas it's certainly not blackout. If you've been following us for a while you'll know that this is what the roof looked like when we collected the caravan from the dealership. A lovely great big airy space with comfy mattress. You'll also know that I've cut down the mattress into two and inserted a nice thick curtain down the centre to create two bunk like spaces to give each of our sons a bit more privacy and hopefully cut down on any bickering. Now I want to use the same fabric that I used as the central divider to insulate and black out around the outside canvas walls. Although they don't look it, the roof bed walls are actually a fairly complex shape, so to get a good fit with no sagginess in the fabric, so that the bed surface can be raised and lowered as normal without the curtain interfering, I'm going to use some double bubble insulation to mark out a rough template from measurements, and then I'll adjust it in situ up in the, the roof bed itself to get the best fit possible. I could have used cardboard for this template because that's also self-supporting and hence paper wouldn't work but you'll need pieces the size of a US side-by-side -side fridge or even larger as the roof bed in this particular caravan is over two and a half meters long and over 1.65 meters wide and as I had some of this double bubble foil left over from a previous project I might as well use that. I'm also thinking that for longer trips in the depths of winter I'll probably use this foil and insert it between the padded fabric that I'm making today and the outer canvas so I might as well fold and finish it off properly with some aluminium tape so then the templates can be reused and double up as extra insulation for the depths of midwinter if we need it. Having made the sidewall template I can transfer the shape onto the fabric being careful to keep the handedness consistent and to leave a flap on the top and the bottom for velcro. At the top I'm going to stitch 50mm hook velcro, other brands are available, into place as this will stick really well without leaving a mark on the velour ceiling. This is the same concept as proved practical for the dividing curtain. At the bottom of each panel I'm going to stitch 25mm hooked velcro and later on I'm going to stick some, some of the same width, the 25mm loops all around the metal perimeter of the roof bed, the part which is actually the caravan roof rather than the hinged roof bed surface. In that way, by keeping the curtain as close to the canvas as possible and as tight as possible, we're maximising the space upstairs, as well as keeping the curtain in place when the bed surface is pushed upwards during the day to maximise the head height downstairs. I'm going to cut the two long sides and the short back as a single very long piece and then fold it over and cut a mirror image piece so that I've got a double sided curtain. I'm cutting it as a single length because I really want to be able to close the roof bed with the insulation in place. There's enough room up there for us to easily leave duvets and so on now, so this should be possible. I'm worried though that if I cut each section individually and then either velcro or zip them together, once in place the extra seams will mean that the roof doesn't close easily. I've actually cut one piece larger than the other to make it easier to attach the velcro at the top and the bottom whilst keeping the bulk down and that's given me the opportunity to stitch in some lightweight webbing loops that we can use to hang fairy lights and so forth from. So then it's a simple matter of sewing it all together. I've stitched in a pocket to hold the battery compartment of any fairy lights we might fit or just as an extra sunglasses storage place or so on. I've also sewed in a vertical seam here to help with rigidity. I 
and then I've stitched the velcro into place along the top and the bottom edges as it wouldn't be seen I didn't bother about with what color I used so I just used what I had to hand Then it's test fit time. Back up in the roof bed and the question is, does the lining fit? Let's give it a go and see. So in theory, that line lines up here. First attempt, no polishing. Obviously there's no velcro holding the, the base down at the moment. But there's the rings to put the lights on. Goes all the way around the back. Goes behind a separator curtain. Out through the front window. And all the way down onto the other side. So it just clips in the ceiling to the ceiling with the velcro and lines beautifully. Well, the only slightly odd thing is that the seam I stitched here that ran all the way top to bottom to give me a marker point. So the seam here is in line with the mattress and it seems that we're coming slightly far around the corner on the front. And yet the other side which also has its seam lined up with the mattress a little bit short on the top. So something's not quite even, not sure if it's me or just the way the canvas sits on the roof. Considering it's not attached at the base, it isn't bad. The sloppiest points are at the rear corners where the canvas is elasticated and the shapes are, co are quite complex, so that, that one is sorting out. But the only other problem I've identified in this test fit is that in a single piece like this, the fabric is super bulky so really difficult to handle in this fairly small space. But a quick check to make sure the roof closes, and it does. And then next time I'll show you how I made the front panel with the zips so that we don't lose that fantastic view and ventilation opportunity. And also how I added zips to the sides to access both of the side windows. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.